folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. And today we are going to learn how to and critique how not to do walking dumbbell lunges. This video will be the last lunge video we probably do in a while. You might ask a question, what about barbell lunges? What about standing in place lunges? A lot of these criticisms carry right over to the other variations of the lunge. So this video is gonna be super, super solid. Let's take a look. First thing we're gonna talk about real quick is the purpose of doing a walking lunge. It's fundamentally in hypertrophy to grow or stimulate growth in the glutes, the adductor complex, that whole area, sartorius included, and the quads, probably in that order. Now there are different ways of doing lunges that target some of those muscles more than others, but more or less most of the time, it's gonna be an exercise that really prioritizes the glutes, but it absolutely carries some stimulative volume for the inner thigh musculature, as well as some volume that's decent and should count towards your weekly volume and will produce some hypertrophy for your quads. Let's, with that, take a look at mistake number one. All right, mistake number one in the lunge. It's not necessarily the worst mistake, it's just the first one we picked, is not performing a full range of motion by not going all the way down. So what does that look like? Give us a little demo here. Some folks think they're doing a lunge. They sort of go down halfway or a third of the way or even more. And then, yeah, you know, something's happening. Good enough, it's good enough. But like, that's not exactly the greatest lunge in the world. Remember, muscles grow more when they are stretched through a long range of motion. More motor units are recruited. If you are looking for any added benefit of functional transitional strength to other movements like real life or exercise or anything else or sport, doing full range of motion is probably a really good idea and it for sure boosts hypertrophy. So what is a full range of motion for lunges? Well, you could do weird deficit lunges where you need to send actually below the plane of the ground, but at the very bare minimum, we want lunges properly done where the knee either touches the ground or comes very, very close. The good thing about touching the knee to the ground is it tells you you're going deep enough more or less every single time. We for sure don't wanna bang the knee into the ground super hard because that's really bad, right? It could lead to instability, it could lead to direct injury or just bruises or just annoyance, right? Or other people are pissed off because you're making so much noise with your knees in the gym. But we want a gentle touch, which automatically means we're gonna be controlling the descent. So give us a shot of what that looks like. Knee touches the ground every single time, gently. Perfect, and come up, and all the way down. Gentle touch, and come up, and one more. All the way, gentle touch, and come up. That's it. That's mistake number one, fixed. Another mistake in walking lunges is no range of motion consistency for the repetitions. Remember, range of motion consistency means, first of all, fundamentally, we're doing the right range of motion every single time. If you do the right range of motion every single time and your body's the same, it's gonna be the same range of motion every single time. But it's more than that. It's a matter of tracking. How do you know if you are imposing a certain degree of stress and stimulus on the body if all the reps look different in sets and you can't even compare two different sets or two different workouts? You say, well, you know, I've never lunged with the 40 pound dumbbells for 20 steps straight before. And someone could be like, well, steps, like some of them were like halfway down, some were a third, some were full. How do you know it was better than last week when you did 18? Maybe last week when you did 18, you did more range of motion on average and you actually got weaker week to week. Then maybe something you're doing is off, right? We want consistency. Every rep should look almost identical. So a quick demo of the bad way to do this is go ahead, first lunge, maybe looks great, knee gently touches the ground, yep, and then come up, and the next one's kinda, oh, that one was hard, eh, sorta not really, and the next one looks maybe a little bit better again, but not all the way down, and then let's say the last one looks like total dog shit, we go down like a third and then come up, ah, ah, screw that, my knee hurts, right? Perfect, so we don't want that to happen, we want every lunge to look almost exactly identical, something like this, so every single time, we have a standard all the way down, gentle touch and come up and a gentle touch and come up, perfect. And all the way down one more time, awesome. Those are for sure three reps of lunges. You can count them like that. You can track your pre-Rs. You can see when you've hit your maximum recoverable volume. Look, if you did with the 40s, 20 lunges like that last week, and this week you can literally only get to 19 until you fall over, something's up. Your fatigue is probably too high and you know for a fact you've underperformed because you have a baseline for performance. The next mistake in lunge execution is taking too short of a step. Two things happen that aren't so great if you take too short of a step. 
One is you can actually get a lot of shear force in the knee, which if you're not used to can be uh, uncomfortable. It can reduce force production, and thus it's just not something that you can overload safely for a long time. And second of all, we might not actually be recruiting all the muscles that we're trying to target. We're not stretching the adductors out anymore. We're not stretching the glutes out a ton. If we do a real short step, it ends up being like sort of like a weird one-legged squat. The thing is people a lot of times don't lunge with nice long steps because long steps are fucking intimidating. And I don't want to lunge all the way over there. I just kind of want to stutter step and give myself credit. Give us a, a look at what that looks like. You sort of, yeah, we lunge and then, uh, yeah, it sort of kind of feels weird. And all of a sudden, you know, we could just be doing squats, but we're doing essentially squats one leg at a time, right? These are terrible, but not the greatest thing in the world. The correction here is that we want to lunge in a normal way, but hold on, we'll do a two for one mistake special. What if we really overcorrect and do super long lunges? Some people like to take like the, uh, the super long step, world's longest step, like there's lava between you. What ends up happening in that case, and we'll show that in a second, is a lot of instability again and a reduction in force production. Listen, folks, if you wanna train for flexibility, that's a whole different thing. If you wanna to train to be a circus performer with the world's longest lunge or something like that, like, you know, we had the elephant, you guys saw the clown, now the world's longest lunge, maybe not so impressive. That's cool, but that has nothing to do with hypertrophy training. We wanna make sure that we're not lunging so far that we lose our footing and that the balance becomes more difficult than the actual execution to the target muscle. Give us your longest lunge ever. Oh, what the hell is going on? I mean, that's really impressive, right? But are we producing as much force as possible? No, and watch her hips as she does another one. It's kind of like a fight to stay stable during the movement because we don't have a solid base anymore. So really the question is, what is the ideal step for lunges? It's gonna be different for everyone, but we'll give you sort of a two-factor approach. A nice long step so that you feel a great stretch in your glutes and your adductors and in your quads, but at the same time, not so long that you're super unstable. You wanna have a nice solid footing on the back foot and a completely solid footing on the front and feel stable. Anything more than that is too much. Give us a look at what that looks like. Just nice long steps, perfect, no overthinking. About a meter of step uh, length or roughly a yard is where most folks should start and then experiment from there. That's it. Next mistake is an uncontrolled eccentric or descent in the lunge poses two specific problems for us. One, the eccentric phase of muscle contraction is very hypertrophic. It contributes to muscle growth. The purpose of lunges for hypertrophy is not just to get the reps done. It's not like a, <laughs> you fall into each rep and you're like, I did 20. Well, did 20 is nice, but did you expose your muscles to the stress of 20? Yeah, on the concentric you did, but on the eccentric you essentially let gravity do the work. We're not here to do that. We're here to let our muscles slow down and fight gravity as well as accelerate against it. We want concentric, we want eccentric as well. And also, it causes a bit of instability if you go down really fast. And when the loads get high, high velocity rebounds with high loads, especially if you're nice and strong, do increase injury risk to some small but significant extent. You wanna stay nice and safe and get the full benefits. You're gonna be going slow and controlled. So the wrong way to do it, hit two lunge steps for us. Whoa, what the hell is going on? And gravity accelerated. That's a hell of a drop. And I've seen a whole lot worse. The right way, is to do nice controlled, and it does not mean you do these things for 30 seconds on each step, right? But nice controlled eccentric, for most people, that's a two second or so descent. Give us a shot at what that looks like. Control on the way down, gentle touch, and then control on the way down, gentle touch. That's it. Next mistake is tilting forward on the lunge. This happens a lot of times, especially when you get to the low position and it's time to come up. Some people will tilt forward so that they can use their back, their posterior chain, their hamstrings more. The thing is, those muscles are not the target of the walking lunge. The target are the quads, the glutes, and the adductor muscles and other muscles of the inner thigh. Those muscles absolutely get a break when you tilt forward. Why the hell are we giving our target muscles a break? That's not a good idea. The purpose of the lunge, and in fact, the purpose of every hypertrophy exercise is not just to get the work done. It is to get the work done by using the target musculature. Show us what it looks like when people sort of collapse in a lunge. Eh, they sort of tilt over, and they had every good intention, and they tilt over, and then one more rep, and they tilt and come up. Yeah, look, you can do more lunges like this, but 
you know, you don't grow muscle from check marking that you did lunges. You grow muscle the most from doing proper lunges. So what we're gonna really focus on on these corrected reps is keeping the upper body upright and still. Can you brace? Sure, if you want. Can you let your rib cage flare? It probably doesn't matter unless you're lunging 800 pounds, but you want your entire body, this segment, to stay relatively upright and resist the temptation to come down, especially on your way down. So go ahead, super upright posture and back up. And even when she comes up, her upper body stays upright and level as opposed to dunking forward. Perfect. That's it. All right, next mistake isn't so much a mistake. It's an, a very optional thing that has some pretty significant downsides that people a lot of times think is mandatory. And it's absolutely not. It is carrying the leg through on each step of the lunge. So go ahead and show what that looks like. People lunge and then they go all the way through with the leg and all the way through and one more and all the way through, perfect. And they think that if they stop the leg here, reset for any amount of time and keep going, that that's somehow cheating. But in reality, there's a huge benefit to that because all you have to do with a rep is come up once, you can use heavier loads. This single leg position and swing through is nice and athletic, but in hypertrophy training, we're trying to get jacked. We're not training to be the world's best, you know, lunge circus performer. A lot of times you can't use as much weight, and if you're really getting close to failure, especially which you fucking should be if you're training hard, then it becomes much easier to lunge, whew, stable, let the lactate go a little bit, and then keep going, as opposed to swinging the leg through. It doesn't have anything to do with hypertrophy. It's mildly destabilizing. If you like to do it that way, it's perfectly fine. But try doing it where you, when you come through, you stop the leg and then you go and you might find better results, more reps with better technique. Give us a shot at what that's really gonna look like. Nice lunge and then a step and then a nice lunge and then stability and then one more nice lunge. Each rep is a step, easy to count. Folks, give this a shot. The next lunge mistake is letting your grip limit you. If you use dumbbell lunges, they're a great exercise. But the thing is at some point, your glutes, quads, and adductors are gonna be way stronger and way more endurant than your grip. It's gonna happen to almost everyone when they get to a certain level of strength. And for some folks, they're already at that level of strength. If you just use regular dumbbells with no straps or no versa grips or anything like that, you're gonna get in trouble. An easy solution to that, so to speak, is to switch to barbell lunges because the bar just goes on your back. You don't have to worry about it. But some people don't have space for barbell lunges. Some people don't feel the barbell lunges the same way. No big deal. Here are three potential solutions. One, at least get chalk on your hands. Two, at least get some straps if you don't have chalk, or even if you do straps are better. The ultimate solution is of course, as always, you, I'm a shill for Versa grips. Folks, try Versa grips, buy them. They're incredible. Your hands will no longer be a limiting factor. One last thing. If you find that you're lifting so much weight that you start to feel really fatigued in your traps and you start to bowl over despite your best efforts and your biceps and your forearms, even with the grip, are starting to kill you and you're sort of feeling it in your, in your quads and glutes and your adductors, but really you know you're stopping sets because of the collapse, it's probably time to start thinking about switching to barbell lunges because the dumbbells may have exceeded their utility for you. At that point, remember, we want for hypertrophy, the target muscles to be the limiting muscles in the move. When you're doing lunges, the reason you can't do another one should be like your glutes are done. Not that you're so bowled over and your traps are on fire that you have to stop even though your glutes have a couple of reps left. So dumbbell lunges are awesome. And for many people that work for their entire career, but if you're getting to a point where you can no longer stay upright and your grip and your yoke, for lack of a better term, is limiting factor, give barbells a shot because you'll get more out of the lower body, which is the target. Next mistake in lunges is going either a little bit too heavy or a little bit too light, okay? Remember, there's a hypertrophy range above which in repetitions or below which in load, 
there's not as robust of a response for the muscle growth stimulus from training. So if you can do more than, gee, you know, 30 to 40 lunges in one set without having to take a break for the lactic acid to leave, you probably need to start loading them heavier. So a lot of folks can get a lot out of body weight lunges, but I've seen relatively high level people that are very strong do body weight lunges for like straight sets of like 50 or 60 or 100. That's cool, it gives you the burn, it's a little bit more endurance work and it's not as hypertrophic. It's a good idea to put enough weight in your hands or on your back to limit each set to like, oh, 30 to 40 reps at most. Okay, so that's the deal. What about too heavy? Too heavy is a thing with lunges because remember, lunges are a relatively dynamic move and you have to take these long steps. Your center of mass and your uh, positional control is now relegated to a relatively thin line and there's a lot of balance that has to go back and forth. Having really heavy dumbbells helps. The barbell can sometimes help, but it's fundamentally not a very stable exercise. If you're doing lunge reps, and by reps we mean steps, of less than, oh man, you know, 10 to 15, at least on a first set, you might be in a position where you're not producing as much force with your glutes, adductors, and quads as you could be, because when your body detects instability, it actually caps your maximum force production. So you think, what the hell, how do I fix that? Well, if you do higher rep lunges, then your body doesn't worry about max force production because it's just the fatigue and the close to failure stuff that gets you all the growth. Is there a benefit to training the glutes, quads, and adductors with maximum force production? Of course, it's a great way to do it. Other exercises are better than lunges. Hip thrusts and glute bridges are different kinds, various deadlifts and sumo squats, and all the other quad exercises you like are way better for the heavier ranges. Lunges are best saved for the intermediate ranges and the lighter ranges, not so light that you can do 40 or 50 plus reps, but right in that, oh, 15 to 35, 15 to 30 rep range is super ideal for walking lunges of any kind. The last mistake in walking lunges, and in fact, lunges of any different kind, is not feeling the target muscles work and or be the limiting factor. So for example, if you are doing lunges and your target is the glutes and every single set of lunges ends with your quads on fire, your glutes feeling meh, totally fine, in between sets you're moving your glutes around, there's no cramping, nothing weird, they feel totally fine, but your quads are barely movable, you can call it a glute exercise because of biomechanics, but fundamentally your quads are taking most of the work and most of the stimulus. Nothing wrong with that. The only thing wrong with that is if glutes are actually your target. How do you fix this? Well, that doesn't mean lunges are bad for you. It can be a loading range thing. Sometimes with heavier lunges, the glutes really start to be a limiting factor and get great work. With lighter lunges, sometimes quads are a limiting factor. Sometimes it's the other way around. Different techniques. For some people, really long steps really engage their glutes. For some people, slightly shorter. Some people can do a lunge out to the side a little bit. That really hits their glutes. Some people with a straight line. How do you know what's right for you? You have to experiment and look for those raw stimulus magnitude checklist points. Do you feel tension in the appropriate muscles? Especially with glutes, in because lunges are done relatively high rep, do you get a burn in the glutes towards the end of each set? That's really good. What about a pump? Do you get a glute pump? If your quads are just veined out and pumped to all to hell, but your glutes feel like whatever, gee, it's probably not the greatest glute exercise relative to how much it hits the rest of your leg. And lastly, disruption. This is an easy one with lunges. If you do lunges properly in a way that targets your glutes, what you're gonna do is as soon as you're done with a couple sets of lunges, you're gonna do like the stand there glute flex where you just sort of pop your glutes together and you're gonna be like, holy shit. Sometimes you get little mini muscle cramps. You're like, oh, oh my God, something's not wrong. Or you try to bend over and your glutes are opening up and sort of crackling and you're like, huh. Holy crap, I really did something. Or you try to go for your next lunge, like set number three, and your glutes are pulling apart like something's wrong. That's a really, really, really good sign that your glutes are getting hit. If you feel none of that, but your adductors are pumped like crazy, your quads are pumped, and they feel super tired, super fatigued, then maybe you need to alter your technique or alter the loading to explore. If lunges of all different kinds just straight up never really work for you, they never really hit your glutes all that much, Forget about them, don't do them much, do them for quads and adductors. Stick to other exercises for the glutes. There are no magic exercises. Do what stimulates you, 
what doesn't fatigue you too much. So when you're doing your lunges, make sure you don't have a ton of joint pain and discomfort. Make sure your RPE is not crazy high in proportion to how much effect you get for the muscles. All of that taken into account, the stimulus to fatigue ratio is really high. If you can sort of work lunges into your program to have a high stimulus to fatigue ratio, do them. They're super awesome. They're not magical. If you don't like them, fuck them. Do something else, folks. See you next time for the next technique video.